In this video, we'll be talking about the voltage relation of a buck converter in discontinuous conduction mode, or DCM. We will first look at the inductor equation. So our inductor equation, we're in discontinuous conduction mode. So during this period, we're going to call this D1. When the switch is on, we're going to be going up. And until we get to this point, D times T1. Then after we turn off the switch, the inductor current will fall and it will actually hit zero at some point. We're going to call this point D2, this region, D2. So for this period, it's decreasing. And then there's a certain period, we're going to call this D3. Sorry, it's not the period, it's the duty ratio where it's at zero. So we're defining these three different uh, duty ratios here, D1, D2, and D3. So this is the inductor current here. I'm going to label this as IL. Valerie is helping us out at the input of our buck converter. And from her view, her current, the current she sees is the input current. So let's just draw the input current here as well. So when the switch is on during D1, the inductor current and the input current are the same. So during this period, Valerie, Valerie's purple here, at the input, she's seeing this current in the input. But when the switch opens, there's no current flow, right? It just can't flow. So the current for the remainder during D2 and D3 will just be zero. All right, so that is our I, I input current. Okay, so we're going to take, keep these two currents in mind, and we're going to come back to the equation here. So what we want to do is we want to derive an equation for the output voltage. That's what we want is the average output voltage. And remember, we're in DC, so the RMS value and the average value are going to be exactly the same in this case. So for this case only, because it's DC, the RMS value and the average are going to be the same. What parts do we need? What other variables do we need? Well, we definitely want the input voltage, VI. We know that value. We also have the duty ratio, so it's D. The duty ratio here, oh, let's do one. Oh, that's confusing. Anyway, duty ratio here. This is for the diode. Maybe we'll just, there's no D here. It's a diode, okay. And then D is the duty ratio. And we also know terms like our capacitor, inductor, and resistor value. So we're gonna write L, R, and C. So we want to write the output voltage in terms of these other variables. To do this, we're gonna take a power balance approach. While there are a few different ways to calculate, make this relationship, we're gonna take power balance. And power balance just means that Pn is equal to P out. And this is only true because we're looking at an ideal buck converter. So there's no losses, so the power in is the power out. So let's break this down. For the input power, we know it's going to be voltage times current. The voltage here is V in, V i, and the input current is going to be the average I i. Because this voltage is constant, we can just put the average of the input current. Now let's look at the output power. Here, since we have a resistive load, we can write, we want the average of the voltage squared here, and then divided by R. Notice that the average is over the V out squared which we know if we look at the relationship between the RMS and the average because they are equivalent in this case. Get V out squared is equal to R. This relationship is always true. And then because we're in DC, we're assuming everything's perfect, we can also write V O out squared over R. So here's our relationship. This is our important equation. We have our V out, which is what we want to calculate. We have, in terms of R here, an I, V, I here. And then we have this other term, 
I in, and we need to find a relationship for this. We want to write I I, the average, in terms of these variables. And we want to have a D in here somewhere because we need to control our system. So we should have a relationship between D and the output voltage. To calculate the input current, we have to look back at the input waveform. So here in purple, we can see what Valerie's seeing at the input. And we see that current, the inductor current is only non-zero during D1. So we can calculate the overall current by looking at the charge over the total time. So first, let's look at the charge in this area. So that is going to be 1 half base times the height. So 1 half base here is dt. And then the height is i peak. We'll come back to calculating that in a second. So the peak value, whatever it is, 1 half base times height, that's the charge, divided by the total period t, and that will be the average current. So now we have to find i peak. But it's not too bad because we know that the peak value will just be the slope of this line, which is going to be, because of the inductor, the voltage over this inductor is V in minus average V out over L. So we know this slope here. We multiply that by the total time, which is dt. We can get the peak value. So let's do that. Let's do dt times the slope, which is Vi minus average Vo over L. Okay, so we're going to plug this into here. And we're going to make some simplification. We see here that the t's will cross out. Here, there's no other simplification. So now let's rewrite this whole expression. I, I, average of the input current, will be, let's do D over 2, which is this value. Now plug in I peak. We're going to get DT. We're going to move the L over here, over L, times VI minus the average V out. Okay. Simplify that just a little bit more, and we're going to get D squared T over 2L times VI minus the average VO. And then we can take that value, this expression here, and simply plug it back into our value here. Now it's time for some math magic, which just means a lot of calculation. We have this equation now, and notice that these are in terms of most of our terms here. One thing I forgot to mention is that t actually is one of the terms we know. We know the period, so t is a known term. And now we have, if we combine these two, I have everything in terms of what we want to figure out and what we know. So let's move these things around. I'm going to do one thing first. I'm going to multiply this by r and r. So we cancel out this side and move the r over here. And then we're going to substitute this in. So what we're going to get is... We're going to do r first here, multiplied by r. Then we're going to do this part, d squared t over 2l. Then we're going to multiply this and this v in together. So we're going to get vi squared minus vi output average. And then that is going to be equal to, since these cross out on this side, still on this side, then we get just v out squared here, the average. This, we don't want to write this over and over again, so we're just going to call this alpha, so we'll make that equal to alpha, and we're going to continue on. So now we're going to put this in terms of i out is what we want to solve for. If we take this and move it all over to one side, we're going to get v out squared, and we're going to minus this on the side. So we're going to get plus, because it's moved over, vi alpha, the average output voltage, moving this over as well, minus alpha vi squared equals zero. 
So you may notice this is similar to the quadratic formula. So here we have a, or one, this is our b, and this is our c. So we can use the quadratic formula to solve for v out. So let's start that up here. So v out equals the opposite of b, so it's negative vi alpha plus or minus the square root of b squared, so vi squared alpha squared minus 4a, which is 1, so I don't write it, c, which is negative alpha vi squared. All of that is over 2, and a, a is 1, so we're going to divide each side by 2 here. Now a little bit of simplifying has to happen. Here we see that we have two negatives, so they're going to become positives. And we have i, v i squared on both sides. So we're actually going to take that i squared out. So we're going to get negative alpha v i over 2. Plus or minus, we're going to get v i over 2. And then we're left with this alpha squared plus 4 alpha. From here, now we, let's just write this again, our d squared t over 2l. We defined alpha as this before. Now we're going to plug it back in and try to simplify. So starting on this side, we're going to get negative and our d squared t over 2l. And then we multiplied by vi and another 2 down here, so we're actually going to become a 4 here. Okay, so that's our first term. And we have this plus or minus. If we look at these terms, this value is always going to be larger than alpha because it's a alpha squared plus some delta, some value here. So this is always going to be larger. So this negative value plus a slightly larger positive value is going to be a positive value. Here v out has to be positive, it doesn't make sense for it to be negative based on our intuition, so we only take the positive value here. Okay, so then we can just take only the positive here, and now let's simplify this, plug some stuff into here and simplify. So v in over 2, now let's plug in these here and see what we get. So we're going to get a r squared d squared, I'm going to write it like this, you'll see why in a second, over 2t, 2 squared t squared, everything squared, right, then plus 4 alpha, so it's going to be r d2, sorry, d squared t over tl. Okay, we can do some things here. We see that we have d squared on both sides, this and this d squared. We can move that out here, it'll become a d because of the square root. We can also simplify this into just a 2, so that it divides. So let's write that out first. So we're going to have negative r d squared t over 4l, that does not change, vi plus, now we're going to have a vi here over 2. We're going to move the d out, so we have a d here now, and we're going to simplify it a little bit more, just rewrite for now. r squared d squared t squared over, we're going to write this as 4l squared. Here now we have just a 2, 2 r t over l. The last thing we can do, and this is optional, it's up to how you want to do it, but we have this 2 here, and actually we're going to move it back inside here just to simplify all of these numbers. Okay, so our final expression should be, okay, first part, plus, we're going to do just a vi times d here, we're going to move the 2 back into here, and I'm going to switch these around because that's the way that people usually write it. So this will become a 4 on the denominator here. 2 divided by 4 is going to be just rt over 2l. 
okay? Then we're gonna plus, switching these around, now we're looking at this term, multiplying it by one over four, I'm gonna get r squared d squared t squared over four times four, 16 l squared. This is v out average, and this is our final expression. Whew, that was really tough, right? Okay, this is our final expression. It will be positive. This is negative, but the overall expression will be positive. We've written v out, which is the same RMS value and average here are the same because it's DC. And we've written everything in terms of things that we know, these terms. Notice we don't use C at all. Um, it only depends on the remaining values here. This is the equation for discontinuous conduction mode buck converter.